Hey guys, it's Wake here. I've got another video for you, and I'd like to stuff right off the bat by saying I am not a professional YouTuber. I just freaking recorded this whole replay once, and I have my my replay software had was set to push to talk, and I forgot that, and I literally had a whole set of commentary that didn't go through the video, and I was like, fucking crap. And now I gotta do it all over again. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna do this a little quickly, okay? I'm a little anxious. I kind of wanted to do a couple more battles. But anyway, this is a replay video from uh, Wake's Realism Mod. It's a older build, the Norska build specifically, uh, and, that I was using when I played this battle. And it's from a Lizardman campaign. Now this battle was... Uh, I thought I was going to lose this. This was this was one unit in this battle is mine, and the rest of these are actually gar garrison units. So I think there's five. I think there's three Saurus units and two Skink. Or no, there's three Skink and three Saurus. My bad. Now they're all also pretty low on health. They're all at reduced capacity from the beginning of the battle. I'm facing a full stack Skaven army. Most of these are slaves, but they do have a few worrisome units. They have like some Death Runners, some Slingers. I'm actually worried about one specific thing. I'm worried about is this play call catapult um and you can see that it's like 400 versus 4,000. so they have like a 10 to 1 not very good but i thought if i played it the right way i could win it i uh, just gotta play it the right way but this this build i, I want to point out a few things i'll go ahead and start the battle but just know that this is by no means this this could have been easily a loss or could have been a, a win but it was it was going to take some doing uh, sort of as the machine gun cannons go off. One thing I want to talk about is these, and this particular build, and this was not true from earlier Wake's builds, where uh, we had changed this, and then we just, through the process of updating and updating, updating, it just didn't get changed at some point, and then it was kind of left out. But these, the sort of vanilla towers and how they work aren't at all how they work in Wake's. Uh, normally in this build it is they're basically vanilla is that they're too op they fire too quickly their accuracy is too well they have like their range is like pretty much the entire deployment zone for the enemy army i didn't like any of that stuff so i changed it all to better reflect a more um consistent harassing element of being in a siege is the best way i can and describe it that so this they're kind of op and i knew that and i exploited it so one thing I had them all uh, attack this siege tower knowing I could probably at least get one of these down. And I do end up blowing this one up and killing all the rats inside, which really helped actually. I'm a little, as this battle continues, I'm a little worried about the Skaven Slave Singers. If only for the fact that they're just continuously harassing my important units with range, which is not good. Continuous DPS is not good. Alright, so. <laughs> Immediately knock the back those Taurus Warriors, just like think of how many of them are. There are. This one thing, okay, so. I'll, I'll go a few things quick, quick, quickly, hopefully. Again, Wake's Realism Mod completely changes the game. Completely. Those, the vanilla stats are gone in, in like 99%. Especially battle mechanics and the way the battles work. And this is completely different than any other overhaul for one of the two total war. This is not something you're going to get in another any different overhaul. Is these Source Warriors specifically are completely changed from the world. Uh, I'll go that a little bit more after I talk about I think these guys are the first ones to get up ladders. So, in this iteration, it's working correctly, and in future iterations, it will work this way. But uh, when units are claw crawling up ladders in vanilla, they go they take about two seconds for the whole unit to get up on the wall. That is fucking unrealistic and stupid as shit. Uh, ladders, especially however tall these things are, like you know, ten meter ladders or whatever they are, um, in real life, take a second to climb, especially if you're trying not to fall off and die. You, you take your time with climbing it. So these, these, in this mod, units trying to get up ladders, they don't take two seconds. They can take a little bit of time to get the whole unit up the ladder. This creates a situation where unlike in vanilla, you have the entire unit up on the wall and now you're fighting it. You're, you're fighting individual, in this case, Skaven slaves here a few at a time. 
You know, and this allows my skins to really gang up on them and my old blood to get up in there. Now they're going to keep sending guys up and up and up and wear these skinks down. But this isn't a situation you could have in uh, Warhammer 2 Total War. It isn't older as Total War titles. This was a given back in the day. Uh, somehow it got lost. A lot of things did along the way. Uh, hopefully we bring them back. But, um, hmm, I just noticed that the, I forget what these things are called, that they can break. I didn't, I never noticed that before. That's cool. So, over here, you know, these flags. Uh, this is looking bad. It might not be as bad as, it, the worst thing actually about this is my guys are so grouped up. I'm really worried about these play calls. Plague Claw Catapult getting shots in, and it does, and it does cause some, some bad damage. I have this one unit of Soros Spears over here waiting for some ladders. Um, this, is a, this is a blunder on the AI's part. They really should have hit this gate and that gate at the same time, and then rushed through units on both sides and hit me from behind. But because of this, you know, I really, I won this battle, spoilers, but I won this battle more through bad decisions the AI made than good decisions I made. Oh, they just wrecked a bunch of my swords and no shots. See, that wasn't good. So anyway, uh, one thing I want to talk about was, so uh, our, everything about Waiting Mod is so completely different than Vanilla, and that is especially true with physics and the way in entities and combat work. And no other mod really goes into this or takes it on such a foundational level. But the foundation of Warhammer 2 Total War, and most of the new Total War games actually, the foundational level stuff is not right. It's not good. You gotta, you gotta go at that and hit it and retool it to make it more realistic and more interesting. Especially if you want something like an older Total War style game. These guys are definitely pissing out. So, one thing that's a, a huge difference is the entity files that you really mess with. Almost, I think pretty much every single stat in those files changed, along with most of the major files. And so these source words, completely different than vanilla. The lore, according to the codex, has them at eight foot tall. And based on an eight foot tall, they're not quite eight foot tall um, with the vanilla game. I, it's, they throw like at 1.2 uh, scale. I think we've changed them to 1.3, so a very minor uh, increase. But when you get them to the correct scale, they're absolutely fucking massive. I mean, Skaven clan rats are essentially the size of human beings. And you see how absolutely dwarfed they are uh, by these uh, source warriors. Source warriors are huge. They're easily can be sort of classified, as, as you would like to think about it, as like cavalry, like horse-sized horse weight entities. And they kind of act like that in the mod. They, they're definitely, their charges pack a huge punch like cavalry. The problem, they can't be 100% cavalry because unlike cavalry, they don't have the speed and they don't have the endurance. So you couldn't really cycle charge them in the way that you could older Total War games cavalry. But they will chew and mince up smaller, especially non-elite infantry like No Tomorrow. Even elite infantry has a really hard time against Norse Warriors. They're just, they're high armor, they're high DP, they're really strong because they're so big, their hits are, they're, they're taking out lots of, lots of damage every time they hit. And that's the other thing too, is all of our sort of damages and health, one way or another, kind of have to do with weight. And because these source warriors are so big, they're really needy mainline infantry. I mean, they're they're really that's something I get told a lot is you know source warriors are scary, which I quite like. I think that's that's lore accurate. Their their counterpart is kind of the the chaos warriors. You know, they're they're supposed to be the the line in the sand against chaos. The chaos warriors are very scary in our body. So. <coughs> So I'm worried a little bit about these Death Runners. I think they're gonna end up just going right through these skinks. Uh, I am this Ram, obviously, and these Slingers who are continuously peppering my Source Warriors are doing uh, a little bit of damage. It's rather annoying. But, um... Another thing that's changed is because of their the weight and their size, we actually increased their size in the game. So they are essentially cavalry size. And what that means for certain things is 
But specifically what I want to talk about is attacking. Like when they attack, when they're attacking because they're smaller than them, they get like an AoE attack instead of their normal one-on-one -on -one hit. So because Skavener's class is smaller than Saurus, every time a Saurus hits into like a group of Skaven, he can affect more than one entity. Uh, this is why they're really good at just smashing Skaven to pieces here. Now I'm uh, I'm they've broken through the main gate. Which is not good at all. Obviously. I think at some point here. Okay, here we go, yeah. I sent in my general and these source these source and this general were uh, sent back here I think to take out one of the retreating Skaven units who actually rallied on my uh, cap zone. But I can't remember if they took the gate out or it's just because Skaven are retreating. I think there's some wonkiness going on where the gate's not actually destroyed, but there's a bunch of Skaven slaves retreating, yeah. At some point they do make it through the gate. Now these Death Runners have completely uh, minced my skinks, but I've got some Saurus Warriors who I'm going to send in. Out of Skaven infantry, these guys are a little bit more scary than like... Certainly more scary than Skaven slaves, but again, I'm not super worried. Oh. That wasn't good, and those skink ran away. Yeah, the, the, the play claw catapult in this especially did a lot, a, a number on me. These spears over here, I think, managed to rout most of the Skaven slaves that end up trying to come up this wall here, which is very helpful. Again, if they if they hadn't attacked so piecemeal and like really hit me in these corridors where they went up the siege tower, allowed me to kind of bunch up on them. Uh, they come up these ladders and they eventually get to the gate and really bunch up at the gate. I might have had a much harder time. This battle. As it stands, I did way better than I thought I was. Doing. I knew they were going to get through the gate at this point. I redirected some of my skinks. Not really. I didn't really. You know, the Skaven, more Skaven slaves are going to be climbing up this ladder. I knew this was going to be an issue. I think I redirected my general. These guys handed, you know, most fortuitously begin to retreat at this point. But these, these skinks are trying to hold the line here. Skinks don't trade very well with, with, with clan rats. I think clan rat, uh, one on one with a clan rat versus a skink, a skink will lose. And so, anything like this, I know I'm just buying time for my heavy hitters, in this case, my Saurus to either finish up these guys or somehow get over there from the other side of the, uh, you know, the engagement somewhere. These spears, they're tired now. Fatigue is a huge deal in the mod. Um, they're moving a lot slower than their, their normal speed would be just because they're tired. These guys are very tired. And so it's, it's much harder to get them around the battlefield. I think what I'm trying to do here is I'm like force cooking these source warriors over so that the uh, play call catapult can't keep hitting them uh, without hitting the tower. I, I want to get them out of the way. Some more spears, source spear warriors coming in from the side. I think these guys are the, uh, yeah, these are the swords that end up holding the gate for the rest of the game here, and I and I turn down my general to come over and try to buff these skinks and do a little damage himself. This is not a, this is not a good, oh, I just noticed those poor bastards who are stuck in the middle there. Oh, I think those might be routing. Yeah, those are guys are sneaky bastards. But, um, now that these swords are over here, <laughs> Excuse me. Hopefully, much, much, much better time of it. Uh, these clan rats are going to be hard pressed to, in this situation, make it through. Oh, how very scathing! Like, make it through these swords to be hitting their own troops with catapult. Yeah, they're, they're going for my troops. Landed on their own. How that was uh, very convenient for me. In the general. Taking out some slaves. 
coming back to the Source Warriors. Doing a number on these Death Runners. Still haven't routed them, but I think they've killed like 40 at this point. And I, I don't know how many they lost because of the Death Runners. No, actually. Uh, 65 I'm going to guess most of those are skinks, though. I have to guess. I, I think I brought all Source Warriors at this point. I really wanted to get rid of these guys so I could free up these guys. Um, the, the AI ended up bringing a bunch of clan rats to the siege tower. But what he did was he, like, had them just advance over here. and So they don't they end up not even really engaging my Source Spears here for a little bit. And my Source Spears just kind of end up... Uh, killing a bunch of them as they're running through. So again, it's a little, a little micro mismanage on the AI's part, to be expected. Uh, although they did get a nice play call catapult again. You know, it, it's it's not good. No matter, even if that shot only killed one guy, uh, it wouldn't have been a good trade. These sorus are invaluable, especially in this game, in this situation. Especially in campaign, these guys are garrisons, but uh, you know that's something I haven't worked on yet. The, the lizard e economy stuff is not implemented in this build, but source will not be just recruitable, and it will be a lot of them at certain garrisons because lizardmen in general will have the strongest garrisons in the game. But like say this this settlement, the Bretonia settlement in um, the Southlands, will not have good. Certainly, probably won't have Saurus. Shame, shameful display. And there go my skinks. Poor bastard again, trying to run through this army of Skaven here. Not sure what this conga line was about, but sometimes you get weird stuff like this. This is an intimidation technique used by the Moors clan. Uh, they uh, form a diagonal line in front of the, uh, the city here with their clan rat overseers. They all yell obscenities. At some point, I think they're probably going to turn around and moon the defenders. I'm not sure. Be my guess. Maybe they're taking turns to uh, get ready to process source meat. You know, this was a smart move, although they didn't really <laughs> capitalize. The guy maybe going to have eight clan rats come over the wall here. You know, as long as they're just pulling through the center here, they're gonna they're gonna not do so well in this engagement. Again, if I if I was playing a human player in this match, things might have gone really poorly for me. Actually, I might have. Decided in hindsight, if I were facing humans, to just forego the wall completely and try to defend the, the main point back here. Maybe. I mean, I, I would have been really scared of this thing if it were a human player. I think we got their death runners routing at a certain point here. Their uh, yeah, their plague cough catapult ran out of ammo. He's gonna try coming in with a return unit of scaven. I mean, you can look at the scaven slave unit. It's got 180 people in it. Most of his health still there. Um, these guys have really bad morale, and that's how you can do good against scaven is kind of with a morale victory as opposed to just killing them all. Because even if you, even if I killed his whole army. As far as like campaign is concerned, this is a easily, with the exception of a few things like call catapult, but it, this this army is easily, you know, re remanufactured by Skate in campaign. My guys, not so much. Although this is a garrison, but
So we got, uh, keep in mind that that's not all dead. A lot of those are retreated, but we got about 90 of my own guys versus 1,033 of theirs. So still, we're still at 1 to 10, basically. Uh, it hasn't changed much throughout the battle, and I'm still in the lower end of things. You know, the, the, the CPU doesn't feel I have a great chance of winning this. But I actually feel I do, because it, especially at this point, because they haven't effectively flanked me at any point in this battle. And a lot of their units have started chattering, which means they're going to rout and not come back. And there, it looks like the, their main forces are just going to try and enter through this gate, and it's just not going to work because they're just not going to trade well with, uh, with Soros head-to-head in a pure melee. You know, give you an idea, when I said some of our, you know, our stats are based on weight, that's things like uh, health, you know? Health is based, for most part, on weight. So these Saurus weigh up, uh, way more than an individual Skaven, and you're going to see that reflected in their health. So these guys got about 21 dudes left in the unit, and they're up at 11,000 health. If I go check out this mostly intact Skaven slave, They've got 178 dudes in the unit and 13,000 health. So we're talking individual dude for dude. Do that for do that. Uh, androgynous asexual lizard thing for promiscuous man scaven soldier. Uh, you have a you have a huge difference there. You know. So this is not gonna go well. We're gonna end up winning this battle. I think I surprised myself again. This is this is it's because the AI did a bad job, it's not because I did a good job. And if this was campaign, uh, campaign in the way that uh, the ec economics were working the way I wanted them to, they were in a previous version. They got kind of retroactively pushed back to this version. Uh, this this Skaven army would be no big deal at all. This would be a throwaway army that they sent to me before the next throwaway army comes. And then the next after that, then finally maybe they'll send a good army out. And so, you know, having won this, it's, it's maybe even a bittersweet victory in that scenario. Certainly we killed a lot of Skaven, but, you know, even Skaven don't care. <laughs> If we look at the walls here, lots of skink dead bodies, certainly a lot of swords. This is probably Plague Claw Catapult, definitely a lot of Skaven. You know, further over here we go. I don't see a single dead source over here, and we had a, an entire unit defending this side. But not a, not a really super deadly bat like not a not a shit ton of uh, dead bodies here, you know. Again, we we kind of defeated them, you, you know. We defeated them using their morale, their low morale against. Them. And as you can see, these guys are routing at this point, or they're about to. They are. And now they're all just gonna scurry off. Live another day. They couldn't take the pain that was coming in from the source. This makes me want cavalry so bad in this battle. So again, that's another thing is the, the, the you can get a lot of ca like we didn't get a lot of casualties, but you can get a lot of casualties in battle, in battles like this. And one way of doing it is having cavalry because a lot of the casualties that can happen in a head-to-head -head fight are from the routing. You know, all these guys running away. If I had some nice cavalry units to come and and just decimate them as they were running, as was in real life. A lot of the times, the majority of your casualties were actually done in the Not route as opposed fight, fight. to the battle. Um, I could have done a lot, a big number on this retreating army. As it stands, this army, even though they lost, uh, you know, were defeated and pushed back. Where it still had like the majority of their army was fine. I think, I think they end up losing only like a thousand, something like that. Even though it was like an army of four thousand.
and I certainly lost some numbers here. So we're going to head and fast forward this. So I can end the replay and then show off real quick uh, the kill counts. So you can see the majority of these units are not like completely shredded. This clan rack unit got wasted. I think this was the tower. Yeah, this was the uh, siege tower that got wasted right in the beginning. Um, these clan rats mainly retreated. The fucking gray seer died, but he he pulled a bad move right from the beginning. Um, they're they're sort of better units. Like death runners stayed in for much longer, and got more kills because of it. They got 73 kills, but they're also better troops than skaven slaves. Um, if I look at my general, I got 33 kills, but then the source warriors put in some work. I mean, you're talking 300, 130, 160, 150 kills. Yeah, but they, again, they only lost 14, uh, 21, so it's not, they didn't, and most of those are probably skating slaves. So not a huge deal, um, but a cool little battle. So, thanks for watching.